What's up everybody on today's menu, oven baked ribs, homemade coleslaw, and homemade mac and cheese. I'm the side girl today. You're my side chick every day. It's me, Greg, that's Jen, <laughs> of course. Uh, the reason these ribs are here is because they're very important. In San Francisco, and I assume like many other places, you can't barbecue. We don't have a balcony, we don't have a puico, the, it's hard to barbecue in San Francisco. So as a meat loving, barbecue loving man myself, I had to figure out one day how to do it. I figured out a way to do ribs here inside that are awesome and yeah. taste great. And are super, super, super simple, but look great when they're done. So we're starting there because the ribs take a while. We're gonna have to actually preheat the oven, 325. I remember this time. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised in this show. <laughs> uh, and then we have a, I have took a half slab of ribs. Of course, it depends on how many people you're cooking for, what you wanna do. Well, what, I, what I use then, is this dry rib uh, rub here. This is of course from Memphis itself. This was given to me by one Eric Castro, star of Follow the Leader, world famous bartender. I use it all the time. Now, it's one of those interesting things uh, for you in terms of how much you wanna use and it's gonna be how much barbecue sauce you like. I like to get a really good coating on there. Cause Jen, how good are my ribs? Really, really, really freaking good. Yeah. And I was surprised because they don't take that much effort either. No, that's, that's what I love about them is that they are so simple. The only thing is the time commitment because yeah. it'll be at 325 an hour, then we're gonna crank it up to 375 for another 15 minutes. And then I've been doing this new thing where I put the barbecue sauce on there and then broil them just a little bit. Really but good. it's one of those, you can. it's a set it and forget it kind of meal. Except don't forget it because you're burning your house down. Yeah. So what I have over here is just a regular old glass baking dish, whatever you got. Uh, you, I line it, you line it with tin foil because that's what the recipe says. You put the slab of ribs in there. Then, to keep make that moisture hot, you come over here to the sink. Make up moisture hot. I think what the recipe calls for is like a fourth of an inch of water all the way around and I'll come show you. I don't, I, you know, I don't, don't panic about it, don't measure it, don't do anything like that. Just get a good amount of water in there, in the base to keep the juice, to keep them juices going. Mm -hmm. Big old Nick. It's hard, uh, if I rotate it towards Nick, it's gonna look like more water, but trust me, there's not that much water in there. Just a good base of water. You see it, Nick? I'll rotate it back toward you. You see the splishing and splashing? No, I can't really. uh, there, there. there you go. Cool. Just push it toward me. Jen, Nick's got an attitude today, and tell him I'm not gonna talk to him the rest of the show. Why? Jen, tell him. No. Jen, tell Greg he doesn't have a choice because I'm behind the camera and he has to talk to the camera. Jen, I think I heard the buzzing of some flies. All right, and you let Nick know that I don't need to worry about what he might be saying or doing over there. You tell Greg he's been dead to me for years and this year is no different. <laughs> Jen, tell him we're moving on. So you've done this, congratulations. The water's in there, the ribs are in there, the ribs have been seasoned, everybody's happy. You have the tinfoil thing. Now you need the tinfoil top. Just a quick do, come over here. Get it on there nice and tight. Now that's gonna Perfect. keep the moisture. Exactly. And that's why these babies are gonna be nice and juicy. All right, so the ribs are in there for an hour. That's great. Let's get started on the mac and cheese. Thank you for showing up. I don't. I only know the boxed mac and cheese version. Mm. I don't make it all fancy like you do. Mac and cheese is like the best comfort food when you make it right. Agreed. Like you have all the options possible. It just depends what kind of cheese you like. Yeah. I usually do two or three cheeses. You can go crazy or like keep it simple. I would recommend speaking to your cheese lady or whoever's working at the counter. Speak to your cheese lady. The cheese ladies are really nice. Yeah. Shout Nick, what, what's your cheese lady's name? Oh, Estelle. Estelle? Yeah, Estelle I sounds like a Estelle. sweetheart. She yeah. is amazing. She knows more about cheese than anyone knows about anything. Oh, wow, okay. Mm. Shout out to our cheese ladies. I can't we remember We have two great names. ones at Andronico's. Yeah. yeah, I don't know their names. I, there's the cheese ladies. Yeah, so I'm gonna get in on this uh, cheddar white here. Black yeah. Creek cheddar white five years. So what you wanna do is get like a chart cheese and then here I got Fontina which is way m more mild in taste. Oh, I should start grating it. Yeah and then I got this Beamster classic. Beamster! 18 months Do of age. Her. It's a uh, Gouda so it's also kind of pungent. Look at this he heaping pile of cheese. For a side dish like if you were gonna eat only that like double the portions but as a side dish that should, that should be pretty much as much cheese good, good, you're looking good for. Good cheese there. So like, what's that? Maybe two cups? Mm -hmm. Ugh. Ugh. Your, your face is wet. <laughs> Shut up, I'm hot, it's hot in here. Um, and now I'm gonna get started on the cheese sauce. I'm gonna use a whole stick of butter. Yeah, that's my whole thing stick now. Miller in the house. <laughs> also, I'm gonna turn the heat on. Also important. That's also smart. Very, well, how, what heat are you running the sauce on? Um, medium. Medium, it's a medium heat right there. Yeah, so the stick is gonna melt. Um, what you want to make is a roux. It's R-O-U-X. So I'm gonna throw that in there. And then you gotta, I'm gonna use all of it. I have a Let's lot of do butter. do it, who cares? 
I'm going to show it to you in a sec. There you go. See? No, I'm showing you. Oh, me. Yeah, I see. I'm sorry. See, I like see it's it. st sticking to the sides and like it's getting a little dry. So you just let it go for a minute. This is butter and flour, huh? Yeah. And that's called a roux. I don't know if you guys have a word for it in English. Well, in America, a roux is like a kangaroo. It's like the mama <laughs> roux, right? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. All right, so you're gonna use that base. It's gonna like thicken up like crazy. Here mm -hmm. I'm using two cups of whole milk. I'm just gonna pour that in there slowly. And like you just stir it around. There you go. Okay. So you're gonna um, let the milk and the roux come to a boil. Uh, you don't wanna let it go too long because milk in a saucepan can go pretty crazy. So it's going to overflow. And okay. You don't want to get to that point. You want to get to a bubbly point, not okay. a crazy boiling high point. All right. So now the milk and the roux have thickened up together. What you're going to do is just drop the cheese in the mix without making too much of a mess. It's all in the mix. And so it's going to melt into the sauce and become a really heckin' cheesy sauce. Heckin'? Heckin'. I'm gonna do a little bit of grated nutmeg. Try not to hurt myself, because I'm really bad at grating stuff usually. And you wanna do a little bit of cayenne, not too much. Kick it up a notch, bam. All right. Rachel Ray. Well, I, no, I wasn't saying you do it, I'm just saying that's what you were oh. doing. You know what I mean? And Maybe. see like how thick this is getting? Here, you, oh, there you go. Yeah, cheese. Here, yeah. Cheese. So you want um, like a very smooth consistency, not chunks of cheese. So we're gonna let it go just a little bit more. All right, so using a ladle, ladle, just gonna pour it right in. Yeah, you are. Ooh, doctor. And then Greg is gonna grab the wooden spoon. Greg has the wooden spoon. And mix everything around. You got it. Make sure they're all coated. And like there is enough in the mixture. I think I'm just gonna, yeah. Just gonna do it? Just in there. Why not? There you Tea go. Time. Nailed it. All right. And you're just gonna mix it around. Mm -hmm. Make sure that it's fully coated. And it's ooey gooey. Here we go. Ooey. Nailed it. This is a good big. I know. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> so now I'm gonna do a thing where I'm gonna use the leftover pepper jack cheese you left in the fridge. Right, from the omelet episode? Yeah. And I'm gonna mix it up with some panko. Oh, okay. And now we're just gonna sprinkle the panko mix and the cheese mix on top. So it's gonna form a really nice crust uh, in the oven. Nice. So you're gonna get some collar and some crunch. It's like cooking is a lot about textures mm -hmm. and collars to me. That's just flavor. How long is this gonna go in for? 30 minutes. Okay. Okay, your ribs are in the oven, mac and cheese in the oven. Now it's time for you to show me how to make this coleslaw that you make that I love. Yeah, so the idea behind it is to cut the richness from mm -hmm. the other two with a little bit of crisp and like fresh ingredients. Okay. Hence why the, the salad. Um, so what I use is cabbage, two types of collar, and then carrot just to add. So you got a green in there, you got a purple in yeah. there, and you got two carrots, okay. All right, so I'm gonna take care of the cabbage and you shred the carrot. So you've washed the cabbage already, yeah. you've peeled off the top layer, you've peeled the carrots already. Yeah. And now I'm gonna grate them in here. Yeah. Okay. And so what you wanna do uh, texture-wise with this salad is have something that's really thinly sliced, like as much as you can. Should be enough of red because we're not gonna make a lot of it, so it's just gonna be for two people. All right, cool. So I'm gonna throw that in there, and you're gonna mix it up. Yeah, I am. All right. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things you said you liked about my coal size that it's not like creamy. It's not the creamy. It's not thing. the. It's not like KFC coleslaw that you get yeah. where it's got like the mayonnaise in it. No. You have like a, a a lighter sauce. Yeah, it's a tang. vinegary sauce. A vinaigrette. A yes, exactly. Cool. So half a lemon. Um, I'm yeah. I'm doing the vinaigrette right into the salad because we're gonna eat it right away. 
But if you're preparing it ahead of time, don't do that. Because like nobody wants a soggy coleslaw and that's what's gonna happen. Nick, you like a soggy coleslaw? No, thank you. So like what I recommend doing is doing the vinaigrette in a completely separate um, jar. All right, so half a lemon. What are you using there? Olive oil. What kind of olive oil? Vita, the best one. And then about like a tablespoon. Okay. I'm gonna do a little bit of onion powder. Look at this new ass celery salt. Oh yeah, that's how you know it's fresh. <laughs> that's how you know we just bought it. Um, okay, so we have about, a lot of celery salt. You didn't need to buy that. Yeah, like half a teaspoon of celery salt. Like just a dash of vinegar because I already put lemon juice in there. No, that's white, white wine vinegar. Yes. Gotcha. Thank you. So You're that's welcome. a tablespoon. We're gonna do half of it because I don't want it to be too sweet. There you go. And then some fresh cracked pepper. And then that's like super personal, but I love black sesame seeds. Super personal. <laughs> so you don't have to do it. I like to do it because it adds another color and another texture. Also, it looks like bugs. No. So if there's like a bug in it, <laughs> nobody would know. They would just think it's that. Oh my God, just bugs. It's okay. Okay, it's been an hour. Alexa's gone off. Time to get in here now. Oof. We're gonna pull out the ribs and we're gonna take off their top. You know what I'm saying, Jen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, babe? Yeah. We're also pulling out your mac and cheese, right? Because yeah. you wanna, basically, it's hot enough. Yeah. The ribs have another 15 minutes to go. But we still gotta give it a good layer of like broiling on top. So for the ribs right now, Bring the temperature up from 325 to 375. Then take this off. Look how bubbly everything is. Yeah. Ooh, so there wee. you go. You got the ribs right there. You got your mac and cheese right there. Yeah. So ribs are going back in now. 15 more minutes. Mac and cheese is just gonna wait on the side because it's pretty much done. All right, the final 15 minutes for the ribs are done. I'm gonna pull them out, sauce them, put them back into broil. We're also gonna broil your mac Put and cheese. Put the mac and cheese in, yeah. yeah. So, here. Good job, my boy. Oh, thank you, baby. There we go. So Ooh, Turn wee. that from bake to broil. That's gone. And then look at those guys right there, Nick. You seeing this? Yeah. You seeing that? Yeah. You see how you, you see the ribs? You see, you smell them. How do they smell? So good. Right? And then you got the seasoning on there and everything else. All right, so there you go. That's a good sauce coverage for that. And like I said, at the end, you know, when we pull it, pull it out for the final thing, because I'm just gonna broil these. Yep. Five minutes, maybe, yep. tops. You can do whatever you want to. You make it a little bit hard. You wanna put more in there, you do whatever you want. Now, for me, if you will, can you put them side to side? Yeah. Like mac and cheese and ribs. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Up top? Up top. Because you want that nice brown crust again. We're oh, going yeah. to Brown Town again. Here We're we go. going to Brown Town! All aboard the Brown Town train, Nick Scarpino. Toot toot! <laughs> oh God. All right, the ribs are done broiling. They're bubbling. They're looking caramelized. Oh wee! Look at that! 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 Oh, look at yeah. that! See, see it all bubbling up there from the broiler. It smells good. Oh, it smells, yeah. You can smell like the sugar in the sauce. Ooh. Look at oh. Oh, that looks so tender. Look at that, Nick. You kidding me, Nick? You kidding me right now with the juice? Tasty. It's gonna drop that off right here. Okay. And then, oh, hear that crunch? Yeah, I hear it. Nick, you hear it? Hard not to. <laughs> don't, don't, please don't jack off the mac and cheese. <laughs> hey, let so her do what she wants to It's do. America, I forget all the time she's in America, now she can do what she wants. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Look how gooey this is. Like that's what you want. You want them all to be coated and like oozing with cheese sauce. Oh, it's oozing cheese sauce, all right. Yeah. All right, that was fun. It was easy and it's delicious. Ladies and gentlemen, that is ribs with jean vive saint Ange's mac and cheese and coleslaw. Thank you so much for joining me, Jen. I'm so happy to be your side girl. You're not my, you are, you're just my, you're my partner. You don't have to say the side girl. You know what I mean? It sounds weird when you say it like that. It's gonna get me in trouble one day. Oh, yeah. With okay. who? I'm your wife. Nick. Oh. Nick does not like, not, Nick's, Nick thinks he's, it doesn't matter. Nick's my work wife. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. I'm more like your bottom bitch. Oh, <laughs> Jesus God, just eat the ribs. <laughs>